Omicron surges across the U.S. One key Democrat won't support Build Back Better. And a federal probe into Amazon labor practices. That and more on this week's headlines. America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. Merry Christmas, everyone. You're all gonna die. At least that's according to the White House. In an effort to persuade unvaccinated Americans to get COVID shots, the White House put out a statement saying that they don't intend to let Omicron disrupt school and work for vaccinated Americans who've done the right thing. But unvaccinated Americans can expect severe illness and death for themselves and their families. The statement goes on to encourage people to get vaccinated and boosted. My question is, do they think this is what's going to finally convince them? You can't shame people into compliance. If you could, then Crocs would have gone out of business decades ago. The White House is scrambling to fight the Omicron COVID variant, as it's now the dominant coronavirus strain in the US, accounting for 73% of cases at the time of this recording. It took Omicron only three weeks to become the dominant COVID variant in the nation. I haven't seen something so infectious sweep this quickly across America since Gangnam Style. And just by saying its name, it's now in your head. Sorry. President Biden announced the U.S. would purchase 500 million rapid COVID tests and ship them for free to Americans that order them through a website starting in January. Sending rapid COVID tests to every American. It's absolutely ridiculous and not feasible at all. Oh, that's not my opinion I'm stating, by the way. I'm actually paraphrasing White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki, who dismissed a reporter who suggested this very policy about two weeks ago. If Biden is just going to implement plans that Psaki thinks are ridiculous, can a reporter please ask her if the White House is going to mail Americans free chocolate fountains and bounce castles? I don't know if these would help, but they definitely wouldn't hurt. Omicron has especially spread to New York City, which is experiencing a spike in positive COVID cases with the Omicron variant, accounting for roughly 90% of them. Luckily for the time being, hospitals aren't being overrun by COVID patients in the city. Right now, New York City hospitals are only being overrun by the usual. Intestinal blockage from eating too many street pretzels. I know they're basically just salted, twisty cardboard, but they're so delicious. To help combat the spread of Omicron, New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio announced that any resident who receives a COVID booster before the end of the year will receive $100. The good news is these boosters help prevent serious illness and death, which will help keep the hospitals from being overrun by COVID patients. The bad news is $100 can buy a lot of street pretzels. Hope the hospitals are prepared for this surge. While vaccines are shown to help prevent severe illness and death, CDC Director Rochelle Walensky said that COVID vaccines may not be enough to prevent infection from the Omicron variant, and that people should continue to wear their masks to prevent the infections overall. Fortunately, Walensky confirmed that as of now, the Omicron variant seems to be causing far fewer deaths than previous COVID variants, with the first, and at the time of this recording, only Omicron-related death being attributed to an unvaccinated Houston man in his 50s who had an underlying health condition and had previously recovered from a prior COVID infection. Wait a minute. Unvaccinated, in his 50s, underlying condition, previously infected? Hey, I got speculating on someone's COVID death bingo. Some experts believe that Omicron's fast rate of spread might actually speed up the time it takes for COVID-19 to go from a pandemic to an endemic. The end just might be in sight, but a lot of people are going to get sick along the way. Getting a COVID vaccine and receiving your booster shots sounds like a great idea. Oh, that's not my opinion I'm stating, by the way. I'm actually paraphrasing Donald Trump, who announced he received a COVID booster shot. This announcement upset many on the right who don't trust the vaccines. It also upset many on the left, since they've been advocating for boosters. But now that Donald Trump also supports them, CNN has to call these shots racist. 
The only thing these will be boosting is their ratings. That's where America stands right now with the Omicron COVID variant. There's a lot of hope and a lot of people panicking. On the bright side, this new surge lasting into 2022 makes an excellent excuse for being alone on Valentine's Day. I'm not sad and lonely. I'm being responsible. More after the break. Welcome back. The Department of Homeland Security announced that President Biden would close unfinished gaps in the border wall started under former President Trump. Construction of the wall ceased when Biden entered office in January, and the wall has been left unfinished with construction materials lying nearby this whole time. Procrastinating and not wanting to finish a project? Honestly, this is the most relatable Joe Biden has ever been. This project won't include additional miles of border wall being constructed, only finishing what Trump started. Personally, if Biden is going to finish something Trump started, I'd prefer it be his feud with Vince McMahon at WrestleMania 23. It's time for a rematch, and this time, I want it to be a Hell in the Cell match. They have more than enough fencing to make the cell, since they're not going to be using it at the border. Although Biden will first have to have a showdown with fellow Democrat Joe Manchin, who announced he would vote against Biden's $2 trillion Build Back Better plan. That would make the final vote 51 to 49 in the Senate, with Manchin and all 50 Republican senators voting against and killing the bill. Biden said that he intends to keep negotiating with Manchin to try and change his mind. While Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said the Senate would vote on the plan early next year, so every senator has the opportunity to make their position known on the Senate floor, not just on television. This is the political equivalent of, oh yeah? Say that to my face, I dare you. Honestly, a hell in a cell match would be more mature and less melodramatic at this point. Manchin is opposed to the bill because it's too expensive, saying, I have always said, if I can't go back home and explain it, I can't vote for it. If Manchin's litmus test for supporting something is being able to explain it to people that live in West Virginia, then I'm surprised he also didn't vote against the concept of sleeves. I know you're proud of that Tasmanian Devil bicep tattoo, Daryl, but it's December. Cover up. So for now, it looks like Biden's Build Back Better plan will be put on ice. Which isn't discouraging many Democrats, since they believe if the environmental policies in the bill aren't implemented immediately, Climate change will melt all the ice on the planet. Speaking of things being defrosted, a man in Idaho was arrested and charged with first-degree murder and felony cannibalism when parts of a body were found in his microwave. I know, that's disgusting. Why on earth would you reheat leftovers in a microwave instead of on a stovetop or at least a toaster oven? The microwave is going to zap out all the flavor. While rare, Idaho does still have the death penalty, which means this man could possibly face execution for these crimes. My main question is, are cannibals on death row allowed to request a last meal? I imagine it'd be pretty confusing if he requested to eat some Indian. Uh, the food or the, you know, uh, never mind. And after the break, Amazon labor practices. Welcome back. Republican Senator Marco Rubio and Democratic Senator Sherrod Brown asked the Department of Labor to launch a federal probe into Amazon's labor practices. The senator said this stems from a series of troubling reports, including one Amazon employee who was fired for pointing out unsafe working conditions during the pandemic, and six employees who died in an Amazon warehouse that was destroyed during a tornado in Illinois. In a joint letter, the senators wrote, Workers' concerns are clear. Amazon's business practices seem to prioritize profit over people. I'm surprised that letter also didn't say that Breaking Bad was awesome. You know, since they're pointing out things everyone already knew a decade ago. But better late than never at figuring this out, I guess. Amazon is so terrible, they're causing Democrats and Republicans to work together. It's a Christmas miracle. Or travesty. I can't figure out which. Either way, hopefully this will lead to better working conditions for Amazon employees everywhere. However, that might have at least one unintended consequence. If workers are treated fairly and actually given bathroom breaks, then what lazy punchline will I resort to every time Amazon is in the news? You want me to write fresh original material? 
Won't someone please think of the pragmatic, comedic online news journalists? Speaking of truck drivers being treated poorly, a Colorado truck driver was sentenced last week to 110 years in prison after his brakes failed and caused a massive pileup that killed four people in 2019. The driver, Rogel Aguilera Medeiros, was convicted of vehicular manslaughter and 23 other charges. However, a petition to offer commutation of this sentence for time served or grant clemency to Aguilera Medeiros has gained over 4.5 million signatures. A spokesperson for the Colorado governor said he would consider it. The families of those who died in the crash say this is an appropriate sentence, while many feel it's needlessly harsh, considering this was an accident. Also, considering 110 years is probably a longer prison sentence than that cannibal in Idaho might get. Seriously, that guy should get 200 years just for reheating leftovers in the microwave alone. While we're in a forgiving mood, I'd like you all to sign this petition, asking my mom to stop being mad at me for breaking that heirloom vase back when I was six. If four and a half million of you sign, I still don't think she'll forgive me, but hopefully she'll at least see how ridiculous she's being for still holding a grudge. Another woman who's holding a grudge is Vice President Kamala Harris who has allegedly confided to her confidants that her media coverage would be more positive if she were a white man. Yep, that's the reason she has historically low approval ratings. People don't like how Harris said she believed the rape accusations against Joe Biden, but became his vice president anyway because they're sexist. And people don't like her negligence over the border crisis and laughing when asked about Latino children in cages because they're racist. It's a shame she's not a white man, because as we all know, any white male politician who are deemed sexist and racist get way more positive media coverage in this country. California is suing Walmart for allegedly illegally dumping millions of hazardous items over the past six years, amounting to almost 160,000 pounds of waste a year. These hazardous items include lithium batteries and pesticides, the landfills aren't equipped to properly dispose of, and they may end up contaminating drinking water and the air. Wait, toxic chemicals getting into the drinking water? Oh no. This sounds like the origin story of Walmart Man, the trashiest superhero of all time, saving lives and money. Walmart claimed in a statement that they've met with the state of California numerous times, that their disposal methods are legal given requirements, and that they are far cleaner than the state average. But given that we're talking about California, that's not saying much. So is this a case of Walmart being reckless or the state of California being overly litigious? All I know is I'd be willing to forgive Walmart if it turns out the main item they were dumping was Crocs. I'd rather these wind up in the water supply than on people's feet. So what do you think about the stories we covered this week? Let us know in the comments below. And remember, America Uncovered is supported mainly by viewers. Be sure to visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered. Contribute a dollar or more per episode. We rely on your support to help us keep making great episodes. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.